Greetings programs, this is Neo Mega Man here with my initial video detailing the r ranking system and character list so far for my upcoming Mugen series. Now, what you'll be reading here with me is my projected rankings and team win-loss chart. So far, since I haven't started, there's nothing there. This is for Season 1 of what I'm calling Neo's Mugen Battles. Now, here are the uh, details on what's going on. Records for all characters and teams will be kept for the entire character stay on my roster. For now, only 2 versus 2 will be competitive, subject to roster and, well, recording improvements. Rankings will be recorded both over the course of the team's career and also per season, and both will play a part in the team's power rankings. As of course, since this is the first season, it will only be this season's rankings that matter. No requests will be taken at the moment, as I am trying to get into practice with this commentating thing. This is because I'm relatively new to this thing. I may be accepting suggestions for characters soon, but note that I am extremely picky about usability and power level. Qualities that will get a character disallowed include, but are not limited to, no custom stating, which means no throwing or no being knocked into supers or stunned, one-hit KO moves, regenerating life bar, insane or cheap super moves, regenerating special bar, being too small or too large in sprite size, being a porn or pornographic character, or being Kami, Nobunaga, Highway Star, Mega Tiger Woods, Omega Tom Hanks, etc, etc, etc. You get the idea. Currently, there are no plans for determining champions or any such thing, nor do I have a Hall of Fame yet. These both may change in the future. I will be announcing a certain number of teams from the start tonight, and all of these teams will be premiering in the first few videos of my series. Afterward, any new teams I bring up or in will be premiered on the night, unless there is some reason or way for me to hype them up earlier. Before going on and announcing the teams, I want to give a big shout out to Top Kirby 8305 and Doomguy the Second for helping me get this thing off the ground, helping me build and improve my roster, and for just being awesome in general. If you aren't watching them both already, please go do so. Anyway, now for the meat and potatoes of this episode. Starting off at number one, you'll see we have Hugo and Poison from Street Fighter 3 and a custom Marvel vs. Capcom sprite edit. I'm not quite sure of who, but Poison is actually pretty damn good. These guys, so far, they are just absolutely unstoppable. At ranking number two, we have Cable and Deadpool. Cable from Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and Deadpool, formerly of TK's roster. Uh, I had a funny feeling that putting these two together was going to be devastating, but just wait and see. Number th at ranking number three, we have Lieutenant Lin Kurosawa and Major Dutch Schaefer, both from the Aliens vs. Predator arcade game, and both of them are really outstandingly tough. I mean, it's not just that they have you know cheap moves or a lot of superpowers, but that certainly helps. They're not broken, but they are extremely tough to beat and can give Hugo and Poison and Cable and Deadpool quite a run. If you'll see on number four there so far. Right now ranking number four is Kim and Eiji from uh, TK's roster. They did rather poorly against his s rank cast, but with a little bit of editing on my part, they're going to be extremely dangerous on my show. Coming up at ranking number five, Jonathan Talbane and Felicia from Darkstalkers and Vampire Savior. These two, I wasn't expecting to be as good as they were. Mostly because whenever I tested them against the top four, they kind of got their butts handed to them. But against everybody else you'll see on this list, they pretty much hold their own. Coming in at ranking number six, Ken and Ryu from Street Fighter and Marvel vs. Capcom. It's the Hadouken Brothers, what can you say? Coming in at ranking number seven, Kirby and Meta Knight. A different version of Kirby that TK isn't using, but that he sent me, both him and Meta Knight. I have no idea where these sprites are from, and they look kind of funky. But they're an outstandingly powerful team, and I expect them to go places on my roster. Coming in at ranking number eight, the first surprise on my roster, Tifa and Eris from Final Fantasy VII. I tested them against pretty much everybody, and anybody you see below on this list, they beat. And a couple of them 2-0. Coming in at number 9, Makoto and Ibuki from Street Fighter 3. Now, these two, again, were kind of a surprise. I picked them up as a joke, but they actually ended up being a fairly powerful team. I, I honestly can't explain it. I don't know where they came from. 
Coming in at power ranking number 10, High Dio and the World. Now, these two, I was expecting more. But, honestly, looking at their AI and stats, it's not that surprising anymore. They could see quite a few wins if they play their cards right, but pretty much anybody you saw above on this list, totally own them. Coming in at ranking number 11, Ryuki and Oja from Kamen Rider. These two are an interesting pair. They fight pretty well, but uh, they're not the best Kamen Riders out there. Definitely not as good as Kuga and Keizo over on TK Show. Coming in at ranking number 12, Robert and Ryo from Art of Fighting and King of Fighters. Now these two, Doom Guy helped me out by fixing Robert's AI. And with a little bit of tweaking on my part, these two are probably going to be pretty dangerous. But I don't expect to see them beat many top grades. They're probably going to be roughly mid-card for the entire stay. Coming in at number 13, Mega Man X and Zero. These two... They're decently powerful. They've got some pretty spiffy moves. But they're so slow, it keeps them from going places. So we'll see how they do. Coming in at number 14, my first stable team. Electman, Fireman, and Iceman from Mega Man 1. All of these three were bosses that Kirby or that TK sent me, Top Kirby. And I figured, what the hell, I'll just use them interchangeably. They're decently powerful, they've got some pretty nice specials, and they do give most of my teams a run for their money, but again, I don't expect them to go very far. Coming in at number 15, Chun-Li and Elena. I picked these two up with uh, Makoto and Ibuki, but they were nowhere near as powerful. For some reason, they're just really, really slow. I honestly can't explain it. But they are still decently strong, and will give most teams they face at least a decent workout, if nothing else. Coming in at number 16, Fox McCloud and Tails, a strange but, you know, appropriately themed team. If you don't know where these two are from, get out. <laughs> anyway, these two are fairly powerful, but they're a little unpredictable, thus their low position on the power rankings. Coming in at number 17, Mock Rider and Master Chief. Mock Rider from his own game and Master Chief from Halo. This is a team that TK used for a while, but he sent to me considering, well, they're more at home on my roster. And he's right. They actually do give most teams they come up against a fairly decent workout, even forcing a few round threes against some of the stronger people. I don't expect them to see too many wins, but hey, you never know. Coming in at number 18, My Shiranui and King from King of Fighters. These two girls... They're pretty tough, but unfortunately, there's not really a whole lot I can do to make them any better than they are, so it's really up to them if they move up or down. Coming in at number 19, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Again, kind of titular. This is the other stable team that I've currently got going right now, and the four of them will pretty much be used interchangeably, but I'll try to keep them interesting, if nothing else. They could see some wins, considering some of the other characters on my roster, but... Again, it's really up to them if they move up or down. And finally, the last team I'll be premiering tonight, Jason Voorhees and Leatherface from Friday the 13th and Chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, respectively. These two, again, they were on TK's roster, but they were going nowhere. Ironically, against most of my teams, they can do some decent damage, so they might see a couple surprise upsets and maybe even a couple of wins. So, they're another team to keep an eye on. Now, as I said, any other teams that will be appearing on my roster will be uh, debuting later on. Probably starting after about match 12 or 13, maybe after match 15. Uh, I will not be updating these very regularly. I will be doing these as I have time. My personal life is pretty busy. But, uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in to episode 0, my update episode i don't hope not to or i hope not to do too many of these update videos because no they're kind of boring if i'd thought about it i could have put music to this but i don't know youtube's rules on that so anyway hope to see you all in the fights and i guess that's the end of the line